Hey guys, I have only about half an hour to talk, but I wanted to ask you if the video was helpful today on flashbacks. I haven't actually known the particular word of flashbacks or what flashbacks mean exactly. And, um, you know, there were kind of like a whole body sensations. So um, I guess it's very similar to something like PTSD, for example, right? So you have these panic attacks or these events that go on and your whole body contracts and you're pretty much feeling like you're out of the reality. You're in the past and you're back in your trauma. And so for me, flashback, I didn't even know that it was called flashback. Hey there, I'm just talking about um, the video that I just made for you on flashbacks. So there's a lot of solutions that you can see. However, I really wanted to talk to you and, and please um, ask questions. This is Q&A time. So put them, make sure you don't comment, but you put a question in the little squarish box. But the flashbacks themselves are kind of like a language that your body is trying to communicate with you. It's basically telling you, hey, pay attention, slow down. This is freaking me out. I'm scared right now, or I'm in pain, or I'm remembering something. It's coming on. But we're not trained to listen to the body, to listen to the language. The best way to say it is to listen to your inner child. So this is something that you can go behind, right? It's your inner child. It's the child that you were, whatever age you were. Hey there. Um, by the way, as I'm talking, if you want to ask a question, please ask the question in the box. That's the question, the Q&A box that's next to the gift thingy. And when I'm answering the question, even though I'm the talking head, please go ahead and send all your love to that person. First of all, for the courage to answer the to ask the question because it takes a lot of guts and also for all the help. So it's not just me as a talking head, but we're here to build a safe community where we can talk about this shit, okay? So I was just asking if the video that I posted earlier was helpful for you guys because it was about flashbacks. And like I said, I had like whole body sensations. Any of you here on the same same spectrum, I would walk into the bathroom, and my entire body would shake and it would feel like my skin was peeling off. I was abused in the bathroom and I had no recollection of the events, but my body reacted to it violently. So it was so debilitating, disorienting and maddening because I could not understand what was happening with my body because my body was telling me, hey, help, help. Hey there from Serbia. Very good to see you. And I was like, I don't know what's going on, you know? So I went to therapists or to people to try to help me or drink pills. But Priyat, Priyat, um, I did not know. First of all, there was called a flashback. Second of all, I thought there was something negative, something bad. And third of all, I did not know how to help myself. So once it happened, it was as simple as walking into the bathroom to have a shower. My entire day would go wrong. Like it would knock me out. I wasn't functional. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's actually a sport top. I don't even wear sweaters anymore. Any of you guys here? Oh, hi from England. Yay, right on. Uh, we're from England. I really want to go to London. I've never been. Again, you guys, if you want me to answer the question, please don't post it in the comments. Post it in the Q&A box, the Q&A. And I have, I'm a limited time live today because I have my next meeting in 25 minutes. So I'll be live again tonight, the usual time, 9 to 10 p.m. Pacific for a whole hour. Or Somerset, right on. I've never been. This is my dream. I'm crashing on your couch. Is that cool? Like, I want to go see. I want to go see London. I want to go see England. Oh, hey, Franz Ferridge, or how do I say it? Hi, Joanna. Welcome back. Um, so once again, if you want me to answer the question, put it in there. But what we're talking about right now is uh, why you have to ask me why I'm so, am I pretty? I don't know. You know, I, for the longest time when I was a kid, I really hated it that I was a cute little kid because it attracted predators. And those of you who can relate, you know, people tell you, oh, you're so pretty. You're so beautiful. And you get this feeling of, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Because we, we try to actually make ourselves look ugly. I know it's backwards. You know, people tell you, well, shut up, you white bitch. You know, you have this like look about you that you're privileged and you are like the standard, you know, kind of an image of the beauty. But if you flip it on the other side, you know, on the inside, those of you who have been like I have through sexual abuse as a child, we grow to hate this beauty like we wish we weren't so like attracting like a fucking beacon to predators you know because you step into the crowd and all heads turn towards you and you're like i just want to disappear uh that's like a long i guess long 
Again, you guys, if you want me to talk about something or answer a question, please put it on the QA box. So when I am answering, everybody can see that and we can talk to that person who asked it. Uh, thank you. So if the video was helpful, let me know. I, I did. I have a list of you guys and I'm going down the list of videos that you want me to make. So I did one today on flashbacks. Um, where, oh, hey, Ramsha. Yes, yes, we have a circle. Hey, guys, Ramsha is part of my community um emberville and so we have circles in there i lead the circles um on you know the work of inner child and remembering your repressed memories and putting it into fiction and healing so yes join if you want to join my community or if you want to just check it out join my saturday free circle it's every saturday um you can try it one time to try it for free to see what it's like the link is in my bio just go and sign up um but back to flashbacks. Hello there. Um, so tell me, tell me what your experience was. Mine was, it was so unsettling that I literally did not know what was happening to my body because my body was, sh it wasn't even shaking. Like any of you have had that same sensation where the skin itself felt like, like my skin was crawling. Like it felt like it was bubbling and it wanted to drop off Oh, yay. Yeah. See, yes. Come to Emberville. It's fantastic. It wanted to drop off from my flesh. Am I alone in here or can anyone relate? Like it was so strange and it was so, uh, thank you. I'm so happy. I love white color. Thank you. It was so, um, I don't even, it made me feel insane. You know, it made me feel like I'm losing my mind because I literally could not explain to people what it felt like just step up okay we got one more do you know what i'm talking about like like my skin became a different texture and the texture of my skin was so unbearable that i wanted to rip it off i, I know it sounds bizarre and probably like cuckoo and outlandish but that is the problem with all of us are facing all of us childhood sexual abuse survivors okay i got one thank you hey sister i'm with you meg that feels like shit. It's awful. Just to connect to other people, say, look, we're not weird. We're not wrong. Like we're feeling this, but we have no way to communicate it. It literally feels like you want to rip your skin off. Like it's so terrible. See you, paka. Um, so uh, yeah, if you want me to talk about something, like the comment about intrusive thoughts, please put it in the Q&A and then I'll, then I'll talk about it. Let me go back. Um, so loneliness. That's a really good one. You know why we feel lonely? This is why I'm building a community here. And that's why I'm building my community that Ramsha is part of, Emberville, is so that we don't feel alone anymore. Because actually all this stuff that's happening to us is not unique in any way. We think it is. Yeah, no problem. No need to apologize. You're good. I just want to see everybody to see what I'm talking about. So it kind of brings more clarity. So it's not just me going talking head, you know, but you can relate. And then please, everybody, when you see somebody on the screen right now, it is user 373-58028. Please tag that user right now, whoever you are, and say, you are not alone. Can we all please do that at this moment instead of commenting? Please, there's 23 of us right now. Everybody, tag user that you see on the screen, 373-58028, say you're not alone. Whoever you are, if you're willing to give us your name or where you're from, the city or the country, you're not alone. We're here together, okay? And we're going to power through this shit together and nobody can stop us, okay? No one can stop us. So the loneliness that you're talking about is actually this feeling of not being understood. You're not seen. You're not heard. Nobody gives a flying fuck about your pain and nobody can relate to you because they don't want to hear your story. So you're just being like, okay, well, I might as well go kill myself. This is how I felt. I was suicidal because I thought I'm alone, right? Everybody, please say you're not alone. Do you feel that? So the loneliness itself comes from not being able to communicate this pain with people. Thank you. You are amazing air. And I'm a writer. I just invented that word. So you are. Um, so what happens is you don't think that anybody else experiences it. And you shut down. That's one. Two, you don't have the words to communicate. Any of you just, did you just hear what I said? I was trying to explain to you. And that's what I did to other people, right? I would go into the bathroom and feeling these sensations. By the way, I no longer feel them. 
but feeling it was so bizarre and I was so scared to talk about it because I thought people would think I'm crazy because I wanted to be normal. I wanted to be accepted into normal circles of normal people and I couldn't talk about it. So does this relate? Is this relatable? Um, whoever you are, user 373, if you can tell us your name and the city and the country where you're from, you know, it's okay to just stay in the background. I get that. Uh, but if you are willing to, maybe we can find someone, other people who are here together with you in the same place. Um, so that's what loneliness meant to me. If any of you guys are here, uh, if it meant something else to you, please talk. Tag user 373. I'm going to move on to the next question, but please talk among themselves and say, hey, for me, loneliness is this. For me, loneliness is this, because it is different for all of us. The feeling of it is the same. It is excruciating. You just really feel so alone that you want to get rid of that pain. There's nothing worse than that pain. That pain is worse than physical pain because we're not meant to be alone. We're social creatures. And when we're misunderstood and we're not heard, not seen, not believed, not understood, not loved, not being worthy of love, or we feel like we're not being worthy, we just want to nuke ourselves. Like there's just really no use in continuing to live life. I've been there. I know how much it sucks. I'm reaching out to you and telling you right now, you're not alone. You're here. Look at how many of us are here. We're building our own family. Fuck that family who didn't accept you. Fuck those people who hurt you. Fuck your abusers. They have no space here. We're creating a safe community and they can go suck it. There's nothing they can do about it. You're already on your path to heal and this is your best revenge. Guess what? You're going to be fucking happy and they're going to be miserable and there's nothing they can do about it. That is how you're going to win by living an amazing life and showing them this, right? So, hey there, let me see. Um, yeah, so um, if you can tell me more, stop your racism. If you, Yeah, period, right? Right on. If you can tell me more, it started shaking at when. So, like, talk to us more. But basically, any of you joining just now, I have, um, I kind of ran over. I have another 16 minutes that I can stay on, probably about 15 minutes. So I can't do a full hour this morning of going live, but I will be here tonight again. Oh, I felt lonely when one family was in my life. Yeah, you know, it's bizarre, right? You actually feel lonely around people who are supposed to be people who are supporting you, but those are the people who actually don't care about you. And that's a misconception. We have it in our society. Your blood family is everything. You're supposed to hold on to family. Oh, look at that. Uh, we have back to Neverland says, for me, loneliness is when people don't hear or believe me and I'm disrespected. Yeah, so keep typing what it is for you. So loneliness itself is just, it's, it's, a, it's like torture. You know, you're plunged into it and you absolutely cannot get out of it because you feel like you don't have a helping hand. You know, you're in the dark. You're being, you're being cast out. So for me, it was when my family turned away from me, when I confronted my father by phone, when he admitted to what he did, when I turned around and I told my family about it and my family all told me, you're lying. You know what they said? They said, this phone conversation never happened. And I was so aghast. Have you guys, can you, any of you relate when you, when you tell the person what happened and they look you in the face and they go, no, it didn't. And, and you're like, you're like a fish out of the water. You don't even know what to say. You're like, what do you mean? It didn't. It just did. No, it didn't. They say, you know, nope. And that's the kind of wall that you hit. This is the wall that I hit with my family. They said, no, I did. Yeah. Oh, I'm not alone. Right. It's the most fucking ridiculous thing. Right. You're like, what do you mean? It didn't happen. It just happened. No, you remember wrong or no, you imagine it. Oh no, you're coming up with like, it's just like, excuse me. You know? So yes, yes. And the problem is that for us abuse survivors, we don't know how to counteract it because delusion exactly yeah what's interesting is that you know why they're saying it because if they believe if they believe your story that means they have been protecting a monster they have been living with the monster they potentially continue living with the monster and so if they believe you their life will fall apart so these people are selfish as fuck you know why because they care for themselves when you're reaching out for help they tell you no 
because they're not willing to go back there. They're not willing to admit, yes, I'm guilty. I have not protected you where it was my job to protect you. I'm sorry. And they will not go there. And sometimes they're weaker than you. You guys, all of you here, you survived. Guess what? That kid inside of you, that little child has already been through the worst. So you're fucking awesome. Like you're amazing. You're in a place where you're stronger. So these people whose approval you seek, they are weak. I repeat it again. Weak, weak, weak. They can't go there. You're going there. They can't. And so there's no point in even asking them or telling them anything at all because they don't deserve it and they will crumble underneath it. That's why I'm just not in touch with my family anymore. Yeah, they're weak. You're stronger. So the funny part is you think you're weak. Do you get the dissonance, the, the, the kind of like the weird contrast? You think you're weak, but you're actually strong. You know, it's your abusers who are weak. It's the people who support them that are weak. It's the people who cannot go back into their own past to air out the shit. You're the one who broke the silence. You're the one who's trying to speak up. So I fully support you here. And that is what we're building here. Exactly. Monsters are weak. Yes, thank you. So bullies are weak. You know, people who are acting violent towards you. It's really easy. Guess what? Wow, big dude is hurting a child. Yeah, that's very brave. Holy shit, courageous. Kudos to you, asshole. Why don't you take on on someone your own size and weight, huh? Oh, you can't do that. Are you shitting your pants? Is your little dick shriveling? I didn't think so. Yeah, sure. It's really easy to hurt someone. A child who is weaker than you. A woman who is weaker than you, right? Do you get that? It's very interesting how we don't see that. We think, oh, they're bullies, they're strong. They are not. Whom are they targeting? Children. Is that strength? No fucking way. But somehow we still perceive it as that, you know, because we grow up, but we're still kids inside. So we think I'm still small and weak, but we aren't. We're adults. Yeah, especially they know when there's nobody on your side, which is really convenient because you're a kid. I mean, you will do whatever the adults tell you, right? Fuck that. It's really fucked up. I mean, I hope this, I kind of went through a little sideways. Stop your uh, racism. Right, Ramsha? You'd get that, right? It's just, it's like, you know, you, you either go, I'm crazy or you guys are all crazy. And then you realize, no, I'm actually not crazy. So you guys are, must be crazy. Like you're, 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 you're just, yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. They team up. Yes, yes, yes. There is always the top bully. And guess what? Usually because we're still in patriarchy, the perpetrator is a man. Sometimes it's a woman, but most of the time it's a man. And then usually the women in the circle, in the family of that man, support that man. Why? Because we think, oh my God, mom, why didn't you protect me? You know, older sis, aunt, why didn't you? Because it's dangerous. Do you get that? For these women, it is more advantageous to support the perpetrator, the man in the family, because he is the one who is the breadwinner. He brings in the money. He commands respect. He is the idol that we bow to because it comes with patriarchy, which has a stem and the roots of it in religion, which I fucking hate with a passion. I respect you and your personal beliefs and your choice to be religious. I hate religion itself as an institution of some white dude telling me how to live get out of my face you know so it's like this is the age of us women this is our millennium we're gonna take the power back the goddesses of us right we are however all of this aside this is where the society is you know muddling in this kind of a, the same pattern happens in families over and over and over again. It's very rarely where there are matriarchs and we do have some of those, but this is the pattern, right? So that's, it's just, it just works this way because of the power. And guess what we do is little girls, raise your hand if you ever wanted to be a guy. I'm just gonna wait, right? Where you go, I don't wanna be a woman. I mean, fuck that. I don't wanna have a vagina. I wanna have a dick. I wanna be a dick. Just like these guys. Have you ever had that like cross your mind? I had that cross my mind. I'm like, I want to be like my father. I want to be powerful and strong like him. I'm nothing. And guess what happens? This is how we hate other women. They just sit and play, you know, watch us fight the guys. And we're like cats scratching our eyes out. 
because we hate other women, because we think the men hold the power. I can go on for hours and hours and hours. Like there's nothing they even have to do. We're competing, you know, we're killing, we are our own competition. And they're just like, yeah, sure. Let the bitches destroy themselves. Whew. It, this this topic gets me going, but uh, hold on, let me. Um, how much time do I have? I have um, I have like eight minutes left. So yeah, exactly. Toxic masculinity. Thank you for putting it into words. I sometimes don't know the correct terms. Like I didn't know the correct term for flashbacks. Like what a flashback is. You guys are more educated on that. I just come from like raw experience and life that I had to live through. And my ignorance stems from me hiding from people for about 10 years. I literally did not read the news, did not, you know, I still don't read the news. I protected myself, created boundaries so I could heal. And so if, I, if, I'm, if I'm saying something, you know, a term, a correct, yeah, I'm recording all, all of these lives, guys, are recorded, every single one of them. If you want access to them, I'm building a community. It's called Emberville. All of that is accessible to you once you become a member. I have to protect that so it's not available out there for free. You come to life and you get it. If you want to try out a circle, Ramsha is here. She's in my community. Go to my bio and register. There's a link. It's going to be this Saturday at 3.30 Pacific time. And I will be leading you and talking to your inner child and accessing your repressed memories and shit. Yes, yes. Ask. Please all ask Lola. Lola 1Z9. Ramsha, go ahead and ask Ramsha questions. Uh, let me go on. How do you stop? Oh my god. Hey, um, gangsta blondie. Holy shit. You get the question, the word of the day. Fuck. This is a great question. Uh, by the way, when I pull up somebody's as a question on the screen, please, everybody send love to that person. Not only is it really fucking hard to ask this stuff, it is vulnerable and exposing. So please all say to Gangsta Blondie, awesome question and how you have dealt with that. So it's not just me as a talking mouth, guys, okay? This is a community. We're building a community, a new family, if you will, okay? The family that we've never had. So it's not just me talking. As I'm talking, we're all talking. We're in the room. Right now, there's 36 of us. So please all talk to Gangsta Blondie about how did you get off? You know, stop guilt tripping yourself. So um, this is a really good question. You know, I'm, I'm going to try. I have like six minutes left. Actually, about five because I have to go and run and pee really quickly before my meeting, which is I neglect to do that, you guys. I would sit here and talk to you and I need to go pee. And I'm like, no, no, no. Another few minutes, another few minutes until it starts burning, which is a shit show. So I'm learning to take care of myself and not do that anymore. Right. Oh, you don't see. Oh, OK. So if you uh, I don't know, Jenna now, Jenna now, it, it's OK. Just just ask your question in um, in, you know, just in the comments. I don't know, you guys, I'm on my iPhone, so maybe it's different. So the guilt trips. Uh, yeah. Tell us more, Gangsta Blondie, if specific guilt trips that you had. Mine were. Uh, the family would literally tell me that I'm I'm wrong and that I could like th th like there is no light ahead at the end of the tunnel for me. So I would do something. It was like, you're wrong and this is wrong. And then they would tell me, oh, you're carrying your mother's prostitute genes. Like, seriously, they told me and I was a teenager. My grandmother, I still remember that. She goes, you have your, your, your mother's genes and your mother is, is a prostitute. Your eyes are shifting, she told me. So you must be a prostitute. So then... She would look at me and I would feel guilty for my eyes moving. Anybody else had that? How fucked up is that? When you think that when you're doing this, your eyes are shifting. I mean, I still remember that. I'm like, Jesus Christ, would you even say, I mean, come on, I have two kids. Like, how do you even say that to someone? Yeah. And so I would be afraid of my shifting eyes. Oh, you dead? Did they? Oh my God. I'm not alone. You know, I have never heard anybody relate to me. Shit, I'm so sorry. Hey, Anaxo, I know you told me your name before, but if you can remind me. Isn't that fucked up? Yeah, my eyes are shifting. It's like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? So I'm not like if I'm looking left or right. So I don't even know if, if it is a killed trip, but it was like something that I would feel guilty about is moving my eyes left and right. Oh, your grandma said that too? Jesus Christ. God, and here I thought I was alone. Do you see, guys? 
the weirdest shit happens to you and you're not alone. Trust me, there's some fucked up person in your family who's already done that same shit, right? Exactly. Yeah, and your dad did. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Oh my God, I can't believe it. This is nuts. So the best way that I found for me to stop all of this is to go deeper and find that little girl. So I talked to that teenager and I said, you don't have prostitute genes. You're not shifting your eyes. This is bullshit. This is an old woman's fear and she hung it on you. And I don't know for what reason. And she wiped you, you know, on her ass. That's pretty much what she did. And so that's the only thing that stopped it. Does it make sense, gangsta blondie? Just going directly at it. Yeah, absolutely. You got it, Ramsha. Just going directly at it did not do shit. Like when I tried to make stop myself feel guilty, it didn't do anything. Because when I started to learn how to take care of myself, I felt guilty. Oh, you fought it? Yeah, fighting doesn't help. Fighting doesn't work. Any of you guys have tried to, to fight feeling guilty, especially when you do something nice for yourself, like loving yourself. Like yesterday, I took a whole day off and I felt that guilt again. I was like, oh my God, I can't take a day off. Well, no shit, it's a Sunday. Actually, people don't work on Sundays. Oh yeah, but I'm running a startup, so I have to work Saturday and Sunday. So you feel the guilt, right? Exactly. So that's the only way that helped me was to talk to that girl and say, that grandmother of yours, fuck her. She was wrong. There is nothing wrong with you. You don't have, yeah, people pleasers. Exactly. So you got Ramsha, you too. Jesus Christ, you guys. I just want to cry when I talk to you. For two reasons. One, I'm so sad. And two, I'm so happy we found each other. You know what I mean? Like we're talking together here, having the same experience. I don't have to explain it to you. You just get me. You don't have to explain it to me. I get you, right? So uh, have you ever done, he gangs the blondie. Have you ever done any fictional writing? Have you done any writing at all? Please, if you can, come this Saturday to my free circle. Or talk to Ramsha and ask her. Uh, it's not on our website yet, but we have a special where you can join the community uh, at a discount for the first month and you get access to unlimited circles. We run two of them per day, one to two circles per day, and I'm going to be running them on Tuesday, so tomorrow and Wednesday. And you, you journal all the time. Okay, so journaling is not the same as... Uh, who is Ramsha? Ramsha is... Uh, Lola 1Z9. Yeah, Lola can share. Do you see Lola 1Z9 can share your experience? Please, all guys that you want to find out, follow Ramsha and then talk in direct messages. Um, so so Ramsha can tell you what the experience is. But Gangsta Blondie, it's different from uh, journaling. It's very different. In journaling, you write the actual stuff that happens. Your brain blocks it because it does not access the subconscious. But when you switch from journaling to fiction, you imagining, guess what you do? You trick your brain. Your brain goes, oh, it's not about you anymore. Okay, it opens the doors. And all of a sudden, you access all that stuff in the back. Like I'm trying to show you guys the back of my head. I mean, it's not literally in the back, but in the subconscious. And that's when all this shit comes out. And this is when you can see what's driving you. Like, where did the guilt trip come from, right? And then you're able to talk to yourself, to that girl in there. And when you talk to her, she will tell you. And that's how it stops. And I'm, whoa, I got to jump into a meeting, guys. I don't even have time to pee. Shit. I should have set my timer for early. I'm going to be here later today. Come, if you want to talk more and see me more, come join my community. Again, the link is in my bio. You can register for free circle. But if you're ready to join, talk to Ramsha and just come on. Uh, uh, send me a direct message here on Instagram. Tell me, hey, I want to try it. I'll give you a discount so you can try the first month for 15 bucks. However, don't worry about it. If it's not for you, if you don't like it, I'll refund you at the next of the at the end of the month. So I love you. I'll see you in Emberville and I'll see you later tonight, okay? 9 to 10 p.m. I'll be here live. Send me comments on my video on flashbacks. I hope it's helpful. Bye.